Where my girls at? Where my girls at? It's going down. All right, all right, all right. Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Force of Friendship. We got issues, 19 a.m. The Superstation. We are here live and in color. I am with my special guest, my husband, Kenny Monday in the hotel room. And uh, we've got Katrina Harris Earl. And the other girlfriends are here, there, and everywhere. You guys have been following our world traveling girlfriend, Gloria Mayfield Banks. She's in Singapore today, and it is their wedding anniversary, their 26th wedding anniversary. Let's give Ken and Gloria Banks a big round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Happy anniversary, Banks. Happy anniversary, Banks. Yes, yes, yes. And then we have Katrina you get a Harris mix, Earl. <laughs> We've got Katrina Harris Earl all the way in the San Francisco, Oakland uh, area uh, by way of Chicago some days. Right now, she's, what'd you say? Just, I said, just call it the sauna by way of the sauna. Okay, I'm yeah, the sauna. okay. I mean, the hot box, the hot box, the hot box. I mean, record heat out west. And so today, uh, exciting news in the Money household. We're in Baltimore. You can see our hotel room. We have a big press conference tomorrow announcing Kenny, Coach Kenny Monday as the head wrestling coach at Morgan State University. Yeah, so he's going to tell us all about his journey. We're going to talk about uh, how exciting that is for uh, young men to be able to choose uh, to wrestle and have the choice to go to an HBCU now that there is a program out there. And so, Katrina, you're looking good all in your AKA paraphernalia. I mean, I'm not I didn't go to you HBCU. Got wrong, you got the wrong, you got the wrong letters on, but we're going to let look, you try. Look, look, okay? look, look. Wait, wait till you step on the yard, okay? So, uh, I didn't have the, the joy of going to an HBCU, but I'm representing today uh, for my Sorors, AKA Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I am so grateful. You know, I went to a small women's college and uh, it is was primarily, um, there were very few black students on campus. And so honestly, Sabrina, you know it, y'all have heard the story. There were, you know, a couple AKAs and a couple Deltas and a couple of everything else. <laughs> and we all are still best friends today. Okay, we all are still best friends today. So um, it is definitely hot, 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 hot in California. We still are over 100. Uh, I think it got up to 111, 115, getting these notifications that's just telling us, please do not. I mean, I have my laundry laid out and my mom is like, do not put that laundry in the washing machine. Like I got to get, hit one load yesterday. And, you know, my husband just came back. So, you know, you come back and you got laundry. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We cannot, you can't do anything extra. We have to conserve every single bit. So no laundry, but I got a fan up here and a fan over there. So we're going to talk all about it today because y'all got some exciting stuff happening. Just want to give a shout out for our forever president and forever first lady, Obama. The Obamas, their official portrait was um, was displayed at the White House and what a joy it was for him to be welcomed by the Bidens. And when I tell you she looked, as a matter of fact, Michelle had our colors on, Sabrina. 
they she had our colors on she looked gorgeous of course and she talked about how much of a joy it was to come back to the white house with friends and she just with class talked about you know the choices that we all have to make so always classy i mean this is one you got to go back and just watch their speech because the way they balanced um, the joy of the day, but not missing a moment and an opportunity to make a statement, you know, yeah, important. important yeah, important. yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it true that they have not been back to the White House together in 10 years? Did I read that or hear that somewhere? Is well, it can't true? be 10 years, can it? But perhaps this might be the first time. Sabrina, I don't think they've been back since they probably didn't even come back on inauguration day, right? I mean, so I think, which is interesting because don't they still spend quite some of their time between California and DC? So right I up thought the so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, so interesting, interesting. It was well, interesting. We got a lot to talk about, about that, but we wanna hear about the big announcement. Okay, we wanna hear about the big announcement. Welcome to Coach Monday. Awesome. Yay, Coach Monday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Coach Money. We got a shout out to First Lady Chrisette Ellis. She is out and about today, and you'll she'll be back with us tomorrow. So I know she might be out there listening. And you know, if we don't say her name, it's a problem. So First Lady Chrisette, we miss you. Hey, we hope that you're having a grand old evening for sure. Well, Coach, welcome to We Got Issues thank with you. the Force of Friendship. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. It's good. Good to be back on. Good to be back. Well, you know, you're kind of like a regular. Uh, we, okay, okay, what do we have to do with, okay, yeah, I think you have to mute, mute your phone. Okay, when I'm you talk, just have him mute the yeah. phone. All right. All right. Okay, and so Kenny's been a, a, a guest a few times on our show. I, I just love my husband because whenever I tell him an hour before the show, he looks at me like, I'm not going to do your show today. <laughs> So, I was wondering. Yeah, I thank you. I, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for always saying yes. Always saying yes. And so we are here, you guys. We are here in the Baltimore area. We are officially moving this weekend from the Cleveland area to Baltimore. So it's exciting times. Uh, Kenny uh, officially started his new job at Morgan State University as the head coach um of the wrestling program officially august 24th but they'll have the official press conference tomorrow and so the campus is all a buzz and uh we'll meet many of the administrators and it's a big doggone deal and so i want to officially read uh some of kenny's accolades uh i'm going to treat them just like a regular get it test. right so Sabrina. Get, it right. Get, know, it right. get it right get it right get it right okay otherwise i will <laughs> Let me treat him like a regular guest. Let me do my homework and uh, and see what we have here. You guys, he is amazing. He, um, oh my goodness, I need my glasses. Okay, here we go. Well, tomorrow the press conference will be live streamed. So catch it. I have posted it in oh, our yeah. chat. It will be live streamed. And so uh, tune in. It's 11 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern time. Kenny Mundy, the first black wrestler in history to win an Olympic gold medal, is a National Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, three-time Olympian, and former NCAA All-American standout, who brings a championship-level coaching pedigree and an expansive yet impressive resume to the Morgan Bears' brand-new wrestling program, looking to restart after a 25-year hiatus. Mundy comes to Morgan after serving as director of the wrestling and head wrestling coach at Spire Academy. Kenny's record, you guys, in high school, 140 and one. So throughout his entire high school career, Dang. he never lost. Can you imagine that? Dang. You know that <laughs> Ninth through the 12th I've never heard that stat. You know what's even more amazing? Sabrina and I went to high school together, and she never knew that stat. <laughs> <laughs> She would pay attention to something else, not the stats, okay? <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And so then Kenny went on and tied only once. So 140-0-1 oh, 
was his high school record. And so he's been on the coaching circuit for a while. He's been to the Olympics three times. Uh, so he comes to this position with- Don't be going years. over that fast, Sabrina. That's <laughs> fast, okay? He's been to the Olympics three times, okay? Three Olympics, like what countries? Like the first Olympics, <laughs> the second Olympics, like get a date, the year. So 1988 was Seoul, Korea. And then 1992 was Barcelona. And then 96 was Atlanta, of course. Mm -hmm. 96 so was it, where? Atlanta. Atlanta, GA. Atlanta, 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 Atlanta. Okay. Awesome. 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 Number one fan over here. Want to get, get it right. You know what? You got to take yourself off mute, baby. Yeah, for that, for the radio station here. Okay. So go back and tell them uh, again your, your, the, where oh, you. Oh, yeah. So the, 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 my first Olympics in 1980 was in Seoul, Korea. And Gloria was there, they were just in Seoul. Gloria Kim was just in Seoul. Uh, then 92 was Barcelona, Spain. And then 96 was Atlanta, Georgia, USA. That's awesome. Awesome, yeah, yeah. awesome, three times. Yeah, and so this is kind of tricky, you guys. We're trying to play with this audio. Being in the same room is a little tricky, so we hope you hear us. But we're excited about Kenny's next and that is this uh, head coach uh, at Morgan State University, the only HBCU uh, to have a wrestling program in the country. And so uh, it will kind of be like a pilot program uh, because they definitely want to roll out um, wrestling at four to five, three to four more HBCUs in the next few years. And so Morgan State will be the first. So Kenny Monday, tell us how excited you must be with this new position. I tell you, I'm, I'm extremely excited. <clears throat> and it's something that, you know, I really didn't see coming. And I was a part of the, can you guys hear me? I don't know if it's, how's that sound? That's good? Okay. I was a part of the, the, uh, the search committee and, and talking to uh, some of the other HBCUs. I talked to Howard, the athletic director, I talked to Fan Yu, I talked to um, a couple of the others, and just trying, and trying to get the programs uh, in place. And so when they asked me at first, was I interested? And I was like, no, I, I got a new position at Spire. And, and I was really happy, happy about that position and really fired up about that. And, and so I kind of turned it down right off the bat uh, when they asked me the first time. And then when they came back, uh, when it got down to really the nitty gritty and the hiring process, they came back and said, hey, we really, really want you to take a look at this. And we really, really want you. We really think it's important to have, um, you know, someone of your caliber to start the first flagship program, uh, to have the biggest, the biggest, you know, hit and the biggest uh, uh, name for the program. So they came back and we talked and, and we really kind of, really, really spent some, you know, a couple of days just really talking about, you know, the program and what it means. And and so it really started to kind of hit my soul. It really started to kind of deep, get deep inside of, of what it really means to be um, the head coach at Morgan State and be the flagship program for the other programs to. To, to take after. Um, and so then it really started to kind of get deep into my, in my soul and I really thought about it. I dug into it and I said, well, this, I really need to take a look at this. And I talked to Sabrina about it and said, Hey, um, let's take a look at this. Let's really take a look at this and let's really think about it. Um, and I think this would be good for, for us. I think it'd be good for the country. I think it'd be good for, for wrestling, um, community as whole. And so, uh, so then once we started talking that, talking about, you know, just the, the, all the, um, you know, the dynamics with the program, I, I, I came to the, to the decision that, that we need to do this deal. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm really I'm, uh, ready to get to work. I'm a worker. And um, so I'm excited about where the program goes from here. I have a question, Kenny. So what is it like? Um, well, I have so many questions, but the first question is, why is Morgan State the first? Why have HBCUs not had a wrestling program? Is it money? Is it, what is it? And what led them to say, let's be the first and now is the time? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Katrina, because it, it really, when they dropped, it was 24 years ago when they, when they dropped their program. And I remember when it did drop, it was 1996, matter of fact, it was like before the Olympic Games started. And we were in the risk, you know, the wrestling community is a pretty tight knit community. Uh, it really is uh, just like any other sport or any other 
um, you know, program. But and so when it dropped, we were all broken hearted that it broke, that it dropped. You know, because wrestling, you know, a lot of programs dropped, and wrestling's not a, like a huge sport. And so it was really kind of a small community. And so when it dropped, we were all, you know, disappointed about that. And so I think Morgan was probably, um, probably more interested right off the bat uh, to get it started. And they had a, probably a stronger alumni uh, of, of former wrestlers that was really pushing, pushing the program and really pushing it. Mm. And so I think they had the most interest um, you know, to be the first one to bring the program back. Now, of course, we had a huge, um, huge. Um, I know we're going to a break. I don't know if Sabrina can hear. Yeah, yeah. So hold that thought one second, right. and then Sabrina will okay. come back in right after the break because we want to hear more about Morgan State yeah. and how we can watch you on ESPN tomorrow. You know we're going to be finding it online. So we'll be right back after this break with Coach Kenny Monday. Force of friendship, the girlfriends, Katrina, Sabrina, Chrisette, and Gloria. We've got half the crew here today, plus my husband, Kenny Monday, the brand new head coach at Morgan State, the wrestling program. And so we're always excited to have our guests, 
my husband, my boo thing. It's a good thing, you guys. And so we are here. We are here. Katrina, ask a question. And callers, please call in 313-778-7600. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear your comments. Call in and congratulate the brand new head coach at Morgan State University. You know, good support goes a long way. And so Katrina, restate your questions so Kenny, before we went to break and Kenny will answer. Absolutely. I was asking about the wrestling program and it's exciting to be the first, but it also can be sad. Like why are there, we, I have grown to fall in love with wrestling and understand the importance and watching what it's done for you and your family. And so I was asking about what led Morgan State to start the program now and why are there not more? How can we get it in more HBCUs yeah. as well? Of course, um, I know this right. is the, only the beginning. <laughs> yeah, good question. I think when it dropped, it was it was definitely funding, um, economics. They, a lot of other programs didn't have good good funding in the programs. I think Title IX hit, and, and they just didn't really survive um, at Title IX when it hit. And, um, and so, yeah, it's um, – it's unfortunate that, that, it, that it, it dropped in 1996. That was the last HBCU to drop a program. Uh, but Howard had a program. I'm, I think they dropped in, nine, in 92 or three or something like that. And so, but that's, um, you know, that's one of our, our, our goals is to try to bring three or four programs back to the HBCUs. Um, now that we've got, we've got some donors, we've got some people that that's behind it. Uh, Michael Novogratz is one of the, the major donors that really kind of made this thing happen. Uh, Michael Novogratz is a good friend of ours. He's a wrestler, graduated from Princeton. Um, and so he's just really been uh, uh, an incredible, incredible asset uh, for the sport of wrestling. And so he came in and he, uh, he gave a, a big donation to, 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 to Morgan State that allowed us to start the program back. And so he's all in now. I mean, Mike is, a, is an amazing, amazing guy. And, along with Nate Parker. Nate Parker, I don't know if you guys met know Nate Parker. The actor, the actor of Nate course. Parker, film director. Mm -hmm. um, Nate Parker wrestled at uh, University of Oklahoma back in the day. So now he's, um, he's, he's doing film. He's got an amazing new film out called American Skin. And uh, it's, really, it's really a great film. But he's a wrestler and he, he and Mike are really good friends and they, they've collaborated on some of his movies. And so he got behind the program and Mike kind of put him in charge of of really trying to get the programs uh, restarted. Um, and Mike was giving the money, but, and so Nate got behind it. Nate was the one that really kind of came after me and said, hey, Kenny, you know, this is my baby. I really want you to, <laughs> you know, I really want you to take a look at this. And um, I think it's, it's, you know, it could be a part of your legacy. Um, and Nate and I have actually, we, we actually talked about doing, um, doing a, a documentary or, or film based on my, on my life. Uh, just my, my life in wrestling and growing up and then being the first black Olympic champion. So I'm trying to get Nate to do my movie. And that's kind of how we kind of start talking. That was maybe five or six, six years ago. And I'm talking to Nate about doing my movie. I said, Nate, you because he's a good athlete. He's a good athlete. He's a good looking guy. And um, he would be a perfect kid. Oh, movie. he's a good looking Two guy. Two things he's that are perfect. important. He's perfect for me, okay? <laughs> so we started talking about that, right? And then when I, I got inducted to the, the, the International Hall of Fame, and I was telling Nate about it, and I said, Nate, you should come, you should come. And so he thought about it. He go, man, I'm going to keep you on my radar. And so, yeah, we came out. Where was the International Hall of Fame? Where were we? In Budapest. Budapest. It was in Budapest. Budapest. Was, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I got inducted. And so, he, um, and so Nate was really the one that kind of pushed me forward and kind of pushed me in the, to take a really strong look at uh, being the head coach at, at Howard, I mean, uh, at Morgan State University. And so Nate Park is, is uh, and he's, he's still S. very, very Dorothy S. He's still in, the asked in the movie who's going to play Sabrina. <laughs> Beyonce. Okay. Beyonce. <laughs> we are ready for it. We are here for it. For real. Right. So this is, a, you know, Morgan State's a flagship. You know, so it's very crucial that, that we have a, a very successful program and we get some, some great student athletes in and some great kids and, and really um, make this program sustainable and, and, uh, and and be a be a standard for the other programs to follow, and so I'm excited about that. It's a big challenge. It's a huge challenge. Probably one of the bigger challenges I've ever had in my life. And uh, but I'm I'm excited for it. I think everything I've done in my life has prepared me for this moment. So uh, we're we're ready to go. 
Ready to go, ready to go. That's awesome. Let me tell you a little bit about Morgan State. I am a product of HBCU, Tennessee State University. Our daughter, Sydney, graduated from Howard. Um, and so we have great love for HBCUs. And I wasn't real familiar with Morgan State, but I, I really am learning a lot about the university now. The president is a visionary. He is doing amazing things. This year, they had their largest, uh, most, most student enrollment in the school's history this year, largest freshman class. Morgan State was founded in 1867 is a Carnegie classified high research institution offering nearly 140 academic programs leading to degrees from the baccalaureate to the doctorate degrees. As Maryland's preeminent public urban research university and the only university to have its entire campus designated as a national treasure by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Morgan serves wow. a multi-ethnic ethnic and multiracial student body and seeks to ensure that the doors of higher education are opened as wide as possible to as many as possible. And so when I tell you when Kenny sat with the president for his interview, the president assured him that for the next three or five years, there's going to be a crane working, putting buildings up every day of the year. And I just think that that phenomenal growth is exciting. They're just starting a new medical program at Morgan State, uh, uh, opening a medical facility. So big things are happening on campus. And uh, we went there a couple of weeks ago and it was just so much good energy. Young people, positive, powerful, empowered. And uh, I just know that Kenny's gonna make a great difference on that campus. And um, so Kenny, because Kenny, uh, went to PWI. Uh, for people who don't know, HBCU, Historical Black College and University, PWI, uh, private, is it private or predominantly white institution? Predominantly white institution, okay. let's be clear. Okay, okay. PWI. <laughs> okay. Okay. Private okay. and public. <laughs> and so, so Kenny went to Oklahoma State <laughs> University. My sons go UNC Chapel Hill and Quincy's at Princeton. And so they were with us on campus at Morgan State and their eyes were big, like, wow, wow, wow. And I felt so at home because of course, this is where I matriculated at an undergrad like Morgan. And so I felt so at home. It was just a warm, fuzzy feeling. And uh, so Kenny, what did you think about when you visited the campus? What were your original thoughts? You know, it was it was uh, just a great feeling. It was a great feeling to, to be on campus with, with uh, you know, just so many black young students and just you know, big eyes and ready to ready to to learn and uh, just that that energy uh, of being on a, on a HBCU was 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 phenomenal. You know, of course, I would always you know, being from Oklahoma and going to Oklahoma State, Langston University was like right down the street, twenty minutes away from Oklahoma State. So, of course, me and my boys would slip down to Langston, you know, down <laughs> You know, we need to go see some more people. We go down to Langston and hang out, you know, see some step shows, that kind of things, and we jump back to Oklahoma State. But now it was it was empowering, you know. And I always thought about what it would be like to go to an HP studio myself. Um, it just so happened when I was coming through, uh, that the head coach at Morgan State, you know, kind of befriended me, and like he, he didn't really recruit me, but he would always get he would always comment to me when I would see him at tournaments. He's like, hey, you need to come over. You can need to come to Morgan State. You need to come to Morgan State, right? And so. But I, would, I was telling someone the other day, you know, if it had been someone like myself or, you know, a legendary coach like a Bobby Douglas or Lee Kemp, uh, these guys that are, are legends of the sport of wrestling, you know, African-American men, I probably would have look at, looked at the school if it would have been a legendary coach um, at, at the school at that time. And so, um, and, I, and I, I had a friend that was on an all-star team with me and he was, uh, he actually, he's on the, the selection committee, the hiring committee, John Davis. And we were we were on the also team together our seniors in high school. I was going to Oklahoma State. He was going to Morgan State, and so I was trying to get him to come to Oklahoma State. He was trying to get me to come to Morgan State, <laughs> and so it's so funny that we come full circle now. And he's still here. Wow. And yep. He, I, I, matter of fact, when I interviewed, he was one of the first guys I interviewed with, and uh. so he's so excited. He's 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 beside himself. He's like, I finally got you, my dear. I finally got you to Morgan State, <laughs> and so um, I'm 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 excited, and uh, it's it's, it's going to be. It's going to be great. It's been so amazing. 
it's been so amazing just the outpouring of support and love. I mean, I've had support and in, in, in calls and in, in messages from, you know, of course, all the coaches in the United States, but I have calls from, from Japan, from Nigeria, from Russia, from Germany, uh, from the UK. So I've had people all over, uh, Iranian, I've had, you know, coaches from Iran contact me. So I've had coaches from all over the world. I mean, wrestlers from all over the world reach out and wish me luck and say, man, we're so excited about the program. We're so excited about, you know, you starting that program at Morgan. So I'm, I'm just really thankful for all the people with the, the outpouring and, and not only wrestlers, of course, uh, just the outpouring of love and support, uh, just the excitement to bring this, bring the sport back to, to, to Morgan State. All right, there's the music, there's the music. This is good stuff, good stuff. We're talking dreams coming true. We're talking helping other people's dreams come true. We're talking empowering young African-American athletes in the sport of wrestling at an HBCU now because Coach Monday's brand new position. It's the force of friendship. We got issues. We'll be right back. Monday, the first African American to win an Olympic gold medal in the sport of wrestling, just recently named the head coach at Morgan State University, the only HBCU with a wrestling program. We are in Baltimore, Maryland, just got here today. We will officially move this weekend. We have a big press conference tomorrow to officially announce Kenny Monday on campus. And so it's exciting, it's exciting, it's exciting. Talking about taking risks, talking about following your dreams, talking about, he talks about all of his career, all of his wrestling days have led him to this point. So can you talk about um, what it's going to take to build this team? How do you start a wrestling program from scratch and when will it start? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, a, and that's the million dollar question. You know, it just, you know, just, um, it starts, it starts from the ground. It just starts from uh, going out and, and, and seeing the talent and, and, and trying to identify the top talent 
that's out there, top wrestlers in the country. Um, so that's kind of where it starts, you know. Then I have I have to really focus on the alumni and the, the people that have been here, and I've, I've had an outpouring of support. And so I really try to, to to bring those people back in, the alumni, to get that support of the program because that's kind of it really gives you the foundation of your of your wrestling program. So get that foundation, get the wrestlers back in, the alumni back in, supporting the program, and then just get out and hit the road. Hit, hit the road and um, and let you know convince kids wrestlers that Morgan State is the place to be and um, and of course you know we're, we're going to be underdogs but I've never shied away from being an underdog um, so I'm looking forward to that that uh, that role and then that um, that challenge um, when does the season officially start and how many scholarships will you have for your team yeah our season the first season starts fall of 23 uh, so I'll have a year to kind of build a program and and get kids in the program. I, I, I tell you, I've got probably 25 kids that are already trying to trying to come to Morgan State. That's mm-hmm. so exciting. That's so exciting. I mean, wow. you guys, because social media is what it is, you can get directly to the coach through Instagram, Twitter. You can send them a direct message. You can send them your videotape. You can talk to them right away. It's really different. <laughs> Kenny's like, I don't know who these people are. I mean, the daddies are calling. The mamas are calling. Oh, I mean, the oh, cousins. Wow. <laughs> I got a cousin that wrestled. Uh, so three years ago. Right, right, he right. Said he got some eligibility left. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. And so we get, I get nine scholarships, nine and a half scholarships, nine point nine actually, so about, about ten scholarships. And um, and so just got to get out there and, and let the kids know that uh, this is an option. And uh, but fortunately, I've kind of been out doing a lot of camps and clinics you know, this last year, and just mm-hmm. my coaching, my job, and then I've been doing, you know, a lot of camps probably in the last two or three years was all over the country and so i've got to know a lot of the kids that are out there up and coming kids and so i kind of got my hands on on the pulse of, of american wrestlers and so it won't be as hard to get out and see those kids and so i'm out there working but it's going to take some work it's going to take um, a lot of a lot of um, hustle and, and getting out there and seeing the kids but it's it's, it's going to be good it's going to be fun and i've got a lot of of course, there are a lot of coaches and high school coaches have been hitting me up too. And so, when I do those camps, a lot of times when I do camps, it's for high school coaches, mm-hmm. and club team coaches. So they're all hitting me up and saying, "I got a kid that I think you should look at. I got this kid you should look at." And so it's going to be um, just getting out there and and, um, and seeing the kids, and building the program one by one. One by one, one by one. I mean, it's a daunting task. You think, man, you talk about being the underdog. Um, you have to start somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. Mm-hmm. But clearly, you see your team being NCAA championship contenders. Uh, I know it seems like a long way away because you've got to climb that steep mountain. But how do you sell that dream to a newcomer, to a kid who's good, who wants to be with an established program? Why would they take a chance on your a program like yours? That's a great question. Yeah, I'm, I, just because I'm, I'm a winner. Yeah, I, I, I'm a winner. I love to win. I know how to win. I'm a, I'm a proven uh, coach, and I know the sport. I've pretty much mastered this sport. Um, and so it's just going to be a lot of it's going to be results over in it. And so sometimes kids won't, you know, they won't come because it's not a big program. It's not a big uh, top five program like like the Iowa's or the Penn State. And, mm-hmm. and so yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it, <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll take a couple of years to get results. Everything is driven by results. But once they see the, the, the results and the kids that are coming here and winning and, and looking good and, and right. really um, doing really well and loving it, it'll be word of mouth. But they will see, they will see, um, you know, the, 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 the power of, of, of Monday uh, in Morgan State. We'll, we'll put some kids on the mat that will be doing some, doing some damage. And so it's going to be result oriented. I mean, look at Deion Sanders, what he's done with Jackson State's football program. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, they were underdogs. They were not a highly sought after. He took his two boys to uh, Jackson State. Now, I mean, they, they are saying that they probably won't even lose a game this season. They are taking, wow. n- kicking butt and taking names. And, I, well, you, you don't believe that, dear? I don't know if they're going to defeat it. You don't think they're going to defeat it? But they're doing well. Okay, they're doing well. They're doing well. I'm watching it. Just on TikTok. No, but Kitty, I'm reading this. Go ahead. 
I, I was just gonna say, I'm reading this book that is 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class. And it just talks about champions, champions, champions. And what I know about you and hearing you talk about it, I mean, there's just nothing like a, a having a new passion, some, you know, the drive, the focus, and it is going to be so fun for us to watch you taking something from the Genesis and what you will create. Um, I just wanted to ask you real quick, uh, and maybe you'll have to answer this question later in hindsight, but you talked about all the people that were um, congratulating you, all the people that were congratulating you. And, you know, in light of the current climate in the, in the country, um, we are hoping that much of that congratulation has come from white institutions as well. And probably we know that when black kids go to HBCUs, they get so yeah. much more than just, uh, you know, the, the wrestling program, the, the community, the culture, the leadership, all that comes with it. And so um, I guess my question is, you know, how will you mentally prepare them to step into um, a new program and from that's HBCU in a, in a white world, you know, and, and maybe I'm not asking it correctly. And maybe it'll be different for them because of who you are, you know, yeah, you are Kenny right, right. Monday. And so maybe that's the best scenario. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a wait and see. I think um, some kids that have, that have reached out, they, their, their family have gone to HBCUs, mom and dad have gone to HBCUs and they were, were, excited about the, the opportunity to come to HBCU. I mean, so some of those kids are already kind of dialed into it. And then the other kids, it'll, it'll just be an experience when they get in and they see the, you know, they see the student body and they see the, all the, um, you know, the, the step shows and just the, 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 culture. the culture, the black culture mm -hmm. and being around that and being empowered. I think it'll be empowering. And so, I think it just it'll it'll be an experience for those kids to to come in and um, and, and take a look at it and, and experience it. Uh, it'll be new because I mean this is this you know still wrestling is a, is a predominantly white sport. Most I mean, and I think more black kids are starting to get into the sport. I think actually when I when I won Olympic gold medal, that, that a lot of kids got into the sport, uh, and that so that sparked a, a whole generation of, of young black wrestlers to come. So now. The top guys in our sport now, Jordan Burroughs, you know, uh, a black guy, uh, Gable Stevenson, is you know, an NCAA champ, two-time NCAA champion, uh, Ron, uh, Roman uh, Bravo Young. So we got, you know, four, five, six really good, you know, great wrestlers that are coming through right now that are at the top of the game. And so a lot of black kids are starting to see that. A lot of kids are starting to gravitate to the sport uh, and want to be a part of, of, of the sport. And so... It'll be um, it'll be exciting just to share 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 that that campus and that HBCU experience to the kids, and um, I think it'll be I think it'll be life changing for a lot of kids coming through. It will be life changing, and, and let's be clear. Um, actually, uh, I, uh, young people, not African American, Caucasian athletes have reached out to mm -hmm. Coach saying, "Coach, I want to come to Morgan State. I think that's the place for me." Okay, because they want to be with Kenny. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of the, yeah. kids will reach out just because they want to be coached by me, right? Because they 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 watch me, they, they've studied my tapes, they've they've seen me uh, compete. So yeah, I, I've got you know right coaches reach out and want to come um, be my be a part of the too. program. So, uh, I think it'll be surprising. It'll surprise a lot of people that how many kids you know not of African descent that want to come to HBCUs. But of course, we will be predominantly black. It will be predominantly black kids on our team. Uh, but we we will have, I'm sure we'll have um, some some white kids or non-black kids coming and be a part of the program as well. So That's we're awesome. changing the world, man. We're changing, we're changing the lives and changing the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That is awesome. We're excited to watch it. We're excited to watch it. Well, you know, and this is all new to Kenny in terms of I've lived on the East Coast, lived in Boston for a long time. Uh, so very familiar with the East Coast, but Kenny has never lived on the East Coast. And so all of this culture is new to him, okay? And so it's going to be interesting to watch him in this environment, East Coast, HBCU. Um, but I know he's going to do a great, great job. Um, okay, Awesome Bistro on Bel Air Road. Celestial, the best crab cakes. We just might go there tonight, Yolanda. When I tell you everything is crab, crab, 
crab, crab. I mean, crabs everywhere. So we're loving that. <laughs> there was another uh, comment that uh, somebody said that, oh, when I was in college, uh, my first exposure to wrestling was watching matches of my freshman crush. <laughs> actually learned some skills that saved me from a situation there junior year. <laughs> very good. Very good, yeah. Renata. Very good. And that's the thing. You know, wrestling, a lot of people don't understand, but wrestling is a, is a martial art. And that's one of the reasons why I stayed in the sport, because it, it protected me on the playgrounds as well. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a martial art. So Brenda's learned a few moves, huh? You know, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're excited. We're excited. You know, Kennedy, our, our son, is coming with us, and uh, he's going to be in, in Baltimore. So he's going to be, you know, helping me in the program and, and working with Beat the Streets program. That's one thing that I want to talk after the break. You talk about the Beat the Beat the Streets program of Baltimore, and how and how influential they are, and how big they are, and and that's a program that I will embrace and and try to build and build a pipeline of young black kids coming out of their programs. They're doing an amazing job and reaching out to a lot of kids in the sport of wrestling. So beat the streaks. All right, we're gonna talk. If you have young athletes or young wannabe athletes, you wanna expose them to wrestling, you're in the Baltimore area, beat the streets, we'll meet you there. This is The Force of Friendship, we'll be right back. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, 
Michael. Thank you, Michael. Always making us look so good on the ones and the twos. 19 a.m. The Superstation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's the Force of Friendship. Sabrina, Katrina, Chrisette, and Gloria with our special guest. My boo thing, my husband, my honey. Just celebrated 29 years of marriage. Kenny Monday, the first African-American man to win a gold medal in the sport of wrestling. And now the new head coach at Morgan State University. Oh, yes, yes, happy 29th, yes, yes. happy 29th, happy thank 29th. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear, I'm so proud of you. I really am proud of you. Uh, I know you've worked really hard. We didn't see this coming. We were just getting settled in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Moves are not easy, um, but I, I wasn't mad that we are leaving Cleveland. It's just too cold in that area, too much snow. <laughs> but, you know, we have moved, you guys, eight times, eight, eight times, six different states in the last 10 or 11 years. People often ask, are we a military family? I said, no, I'm married to a coach who likes to win. And so he goes where the team is. And so here we are. Um, uh, in the area. We're excited about this area, but you were talking about Beat the Streets. Talk about that organization. Yeah, I mean, Beat the Streets is an amazing program started by Michael Novogratz again. And he started in New York and just started to build a wrestling program that reached out to underprivileged kids in the area, get, get the kids off the street and give them something to, you know, to do in and, and the sport of wrestling. Wrestling, the sport itself is such a great sport. I mean, our boys wrestle, of course, and you know the guys they are. <coughs> Excuse me, but I mean, they built so much character and just the discipline and commitment that you have to be uh, in the sport of wrestling is is, is amazing. That it, it builds it builds kids and it really builds their body as long as their, their mind and just of course, like I said, it's a, it's a self defense as well, martial art. And so it's really just a, a great program and. They, they, they've got beat the street programs. I mean, and, and a lot of them are big cities. They got one in Philadelphia. They got one um, here in Baltimore. They got one in Chicago. New York. Uh, New York. And so they're doing a great job of reaching out and getting these kids off the street. And so Beat the Streets Baltimore is a, a, just a, a great program. And they've got over 100 kids in their program. And so, I mean, it's, it's really good for me because they are really supportive. They really, they knew the, the hire was coming. Once Morgan State got... Uh, Started putting out the one to hire a coach and start a program, and so a lot of those guys have reached out to me and and, and, and let me know how excited they are, and how many of the kids that, that, that want wanted to wrestle at, at Morgan State, and so for me, you know, just helping that program and, and helping that program to swell and get it bigger and reach out to more more kids uh, in the area uh, and just really build a pipeline to Morgan State. So I want kids to be dreaming, dreaming about coming to Morgan State to wrestle. And so that's that's our focus to really get behind that Beat the Streets program and, and make that thing just blow up and just make it such a, a big thing in the area. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm also excited about just you know getting in the, in the community and really letting the, letting the community know that we are here and we're, we're going to be for these kids. My students will be out in the community doing a lot of work in the community, uh, doing a lot of the uh, social work and uh, you know just um, and getting out and being a part of the community and helping kids and, and going into schools and helping kids. And so we're going to be really reaching out to a lot of people in the area and the kids and, and trying to be a force and just be, have an impact, not only in the rest, not only in, in, in our our field, but just in the community. And so that's a big, big focus that I want to have about being uh, in the emergency program. I'm on the website now. I mean, it's so impressive. $32 million invested in urban communities and just right. looking at it. Kenny, back, it's back to school. Can you just talk about for um, the parents out there who maybe haven't considered wrestling for their um, for their child? How early? Um, what would you recommend, and why would it be a great sport for them to look at? Yeah, I mean, I started wrestling when I was five, uh, and just never looked back. It was just such a great sport for me, just because again, um, it was it's, you know even though wrestling is an individual sport. It's such a, a great team sport because you have to come together as a team to, to help your other your teammates and that whole thing. And um, but yeah, I started when I was five, and my boy, my boy started when they were six as well. Uh, and just wow. it just gives you, yeah, it gives it gives them a, a something to, to 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 do and be a part of. It builds their body. Yeah, it really teaches them a lot about exerts energy yeah. when they're young. <laughs> They come home so dull, tired. They just 
want to go to sleep. That was my saving grace for two boys, 18 months apart. They wrestled, and I loved it because it made them tired. Because if not, they had so much energy, they'd be breaking up the furniture and yeah. jumping, bouncing off the walls. And so when they come off from wrestling, two hours of wrestling practice, they'd rather eat, take a shower, study, and go to bed. Yeah. So she loved that. Wow. Wow. But yeah, it's such a great sport for young kids. I mean, now the women's movement is really, really taken off. Really? It's, it's exploded. It really it's is. It's exploded across the country, actually across the world. Because now they have it's in the Olympic Games, World Championships, and right now the United States has one of the the best wrestling teams in the world. They're top three in the world. We've got some dynamite uh, wrestlers, women that are wrestling on the team, um, and so they're so fun to watch. And that trickles down, just like the the, the national men's team. You know, the, the, we have a, a dynamite wrestling team too on the men's side as well. That trickles down all the way down to the to the beginners. And so I'm really excited about, and I, I tell people this all the time here lately. Um, now, in my lifetime, this is the best time to be a wrestler in the history of my in my whole life. And I've been in the sport for wow. 50, 60 years, 55 years. And this right now is the best time to be a wrestler. Yes. Just because all the, if all the programs, all the clubs, uh, club wrestling is a big thing. Um, and so kids are really getting into the sport. They're really I mean, they're really doing really well in the, in the sport uh, these days. So it's the best Penny, time what is wrestling. club wrestling when you say that? Can you explain that? Explain what now? When you said club wrestling, is that what you said? Because you were talking about it's yeah. the best time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Club wrestling is kind of is, is similar to track and field. You have clubs. So it's not in the schools. So then they have mm -hmm. club, club okay. teams where the kids will go. <laughs> yeah, they will go. <clears throat> and then be a part of a club. So they do their high school, but then they, they would go do extra work at these club teams. And so now it's just kind of like like karate schools. I mean, they have karate, they have club teams, and they run them, or, or schools, they run them all over the country now. And so people are really taking advantage of, of those club pro programs. And, um, and these kids are, are getting so much so much experience from that. Uh, and we run a club program in Texas for, for 10 years. Uh, when the boys started, so it was mm -hmm. a really good thing. I mean, I put probably we put twenty kids in college uh, from that class. Right. You know, from wow. you know, the kids who graduated from Duke, they graduated from UNC. I had a kid at West Point, um, so they're all over the country. And so it's also, of course, it's in it's in high school wrestling, but it's in college wrestling. So you get you get scholarships and other things. So just a great opportunity to, to get kids into sport. Yeah, there was one question from Anissa. Let's put that up and then we got to go. Our time goes by so fast. You've been an amazing guest, Kenny. How would you compare your collegiate wrestling experience to what the youth have access to now? What old school wisdom do you consider gospel for those embracing the sport? Man, right that's, quick. Yeah. That's loaded. <laughs> that's Answer it quickly. Yeah, I think it's just it's, it's levels. It's just levels to the game. Just like anything else, I think once you start wrestling, you get that experience. Um, but it's pretty much, you know, I think the difference is we, we, we do international wrestling. So we do, I go from, from collegiate wrestling, what you do in high schools and college, but then you do another, the other, the other skill sport is freestyle and Greco Roman. And that's what they, they do in the Olympic games. And so it's, the rules are different, but a lot of kids nowadays are going back and forth from freestyle Greco Roman to, to college, college style, collegiate style wrestling. And so it's a difference. And we're the only country that wrestles that that style, the collegiate style. Really? All the other countries wrestle freestyle and Greco Roman. So it's a, it's a big a bit of a difference, but man, we we got we gotta go, dear. We gotta go. They're cutting us off. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> you guys, watch the we're we're watching Twitter tomorrow. We're watching Twitter. We're watching for the announcement. Thank you. See you tomorrow, same time, same place. Ciao.